Okay, guys and girls, it's a, just a little bit of a health tip before we start. Use gloves because waste oil can be very toxic to skin even after a short time in contact with it. You can either use nitrile or latex disposable gloves and they're quite cheap to buy by the box or even use a pair of marigolds. <laughs> Actually, what we're going to do today is three filters, and this comes in a kit. And the kit also includes a couple of sump plug washers, diesel filter, and an oil filter, and then the one at the bottom is an air filter. Okay, we also have some 10W40. This turbo diesel oil is to the correct API number, however, what we must pay attention to is using a high quality oil. And the viscosity range within the oils that are recommended are to be adhered to. And this is something you have to understand. So looking at lubricants and fluids, the diesel engine for the 300 TDI is actually 15W40 with an API number CD. If you don't understand viscosity indexing and how it works, then stick with the 15W40. We've gone for 10W40 because we're going to be using this vehicle in a colder climate. And with the indexing numbers, the lower the index number, the lower the temperature it can cope with. 5W40 will cope with an extreme temperature of minus 30. That's ambient temperature. We'll be sticking with 10W40 because this winter we'll be going to somewhere that has an ambient temperature of down to minus 20. All temperature quotes in this video are in degrees centigrade. Okay, getting away from the oil. The kit has two sump plugs in it for the 300 TDI because there are two different sump plug sizes. Anyway, getting on to removing the sump plug, just be careful once you wound it off that you are going to get oil on your hand and you need a decent drainer to drain the oil. Hot engine oil will run out much quicker because the viscosity is thinner. If it's cold it will be thicker and will take a longer time to pour out and drain the sump. As I said, the 300 TDI has two different sump plug sizes, so either use the copper washer or the aluminium one, depending which one has the tighter fit. Always torque up the sump plug, and according to the manual, it's 35 newton meters. This will stop the threads from stripping. Okay, so once it's clicked up, you're happy, go ahead and take the filter off. Plenty of different tools to remove the filter. This one happens to be a special wrench, which is like a pair of mole grips, but it has wider jaws for gripping filters. Once it's loose, you can then spin it off, but just be careful because there'll be oil spilling out of here at that point. The filter is in a very awkward place on the uh, TDI engine, as you can see up here. What I'd advise is to reach to the filter so you're at an angle and not underneath it. I know it sounds a bit daft, but you see where my hand is, it's not going to get splattered with oil once it's undone. It can be dropped straight into the drainer after it's become loose, like so. You will also get oil dripping out of the filter housing and onto the differential. So as a word of warning, you can see here that there is a mess, okay? This is cardboard to make sure there isn't much of a spillage. And there will be. You can see the mess it's made and it's something that can't be avoided. This is a very common mistake that people put oil on the ceiling ring or don't put anything on at all. The best thing to do, and this is old school, is to use grease on the oil filter and oil on the diesel filter. And once you know that there isn't a seal on the filter housing, you can then wind it back on again. Now some people say you can prime it up. But to be honest with you, you can put these small filters on empty, okay? So once you've got the lip in contact with the filter housing, just turn it with both your hands until it feels like it won't go anymore. Usually that will be about three quarters of a turn after the seal has come in contact with the filter housing. You can see that written on here. This filter won't drop off. 
However, I will warn you, if you put a dry seal on, it will be really hard to remove when you want to take it off again. Okay, so the capacity for the 300 TDI is 5.8 litres. And the filter is going to take nearly almost a litre on top of that. Filters always get changed when you change the oil. Right, so it's only an estimate of the amount of oil that Land Rover recommend. You have to really check it manually. But you can put 5 litres in straight away into the sump. And then what I usually do before we go any further is change the diesel filter. This just saves time having to run around the vehicle turning it on and off again. There is a link below on how to change your diesel filter as well as your air filter and how to bleed it up properly. And this is the next thing we need to do is just run it and prime the oil filter like so. And what will happen is you'll notice your light will go out rather quickly. Okay, so once it's gone out, you just wait a little while until the oil's gone back to the sump and then check it. It will be just above minimum. All right, what we want to do is then top it up with a little bit more lube and then we should be fine. Okay, I'm getting a little bit long in the tooth and I've said this quite a few times, but the first thing you do is wipe your dipstick and then check your oil. Okay, don't just take it for granted it's at the right level. So after topping up, this is about right. It's below the maximum mark, which is perfect. You'll find your oil will always have a little bit of black in it because there'll always be some left over in the sump. Diesel filter and air filter usually get changed once a year or every 12,000 miles, depending on the vehicle usage. And uh, just as reference, it's always handy to put the mileage on. There is a tutorial about changing the air filter if you don't feel confident about it, which is in the links below this video. Okay, so the kit is BK0013 for the 300 TDI Defender 110. Good kit, saves a lot of hassle and you get a free cardboard box with it. Right, okay, so in the next video we'll be changing the EP oils or the hypo oils in the rear diff, front diff and the transfer box. So stay tuned.